Item sorters are one of the most fundamental parts of any storage system. Searching through a chest monster to find what I am looking for is the worst part of Minecraft. So even a simple item sorter is a must have. But how do they work? Why are there so many different types? And how do we select the best type for each situation? Well, in this video, we will start to answer these questions and more. So let's jump right into it. The base component of a sorter is typically a hopper. That said, hoppers are pretty boring by themselves. The interesting stuff comes when we mix hoppers with other redstone components to manipulate their properties. And that's what this video is really about, creatively exploiting the properties of hoppers. So to start off, let's briefly recap the hopper. A hopper is a small container with two main functions. They push and they pull. They also pick up entities, but we will consider that part of pulling. Pushing takes an item from the hopper's inventory and pushes it out of the hopper into a container that the nozzle is facing into. Pulling pulls an item from above the hopper into the hopper itself. Pushing always happens before pulling. So for example, one of the simplest interactions we commonly see is a simple stack of chests. There are three hoppers stacked on top of each other all facing into chests. If I put an item in the top chest, what do you think will happen? You might think that since the number one hopper will push first, the item will end up in the number one chest since it will push before the bottom hopper can pull it out. But this is not the case. The reason why is because each hopper itself pushes before it pulls, but this is only within the hopper itself and only when the hopper is off cooldown. When the number one hopper pulls an item from the chest, its cooldown is set to eight game ticks. When the number two hopper is calculated, here we will assume the next game tick, the number one hopper is on cooldown, so it will do nothing, and the number two hopper will pull the item out of the number one hopper. Then because it has pulled, the number two hopper is put on cooldown. So the last step will be repeated, but with the number three hopper pulling from the number two hopper. Finally, when the number three hopper's cooldown resets, it will push the item into the number three chest. It can also pull an item from the number two hopper if one is there, and that pull will happen during the same game tick as the push into the chest. So the push into the chest won't impact the pull because the push is always before the pull, which is before the setting of the cooldown. In this way, the silo will fill up from the bottom first, allowing the stack chest to function. This demonstrates some of the simple push-pull mechanics at play with hopper systems, which are important to understand when looking at sorting systems. But I mean, let's jump right into it with a very basic sorter. For example, here is a hopper line transferring the loot of a gold farm to a storage system. We want to keep all of the gold nuggets, but trash the rest of the junk. So how would we go about doing that? Well, we can remove the items from the line with a hopper below the line, which will pull the items into the hopper. We only want gold nuggets though. So to prevent other items from being pulled into the hopper, we can put one gold nugget in each slot. This works, but also kind of sucks because it can only sort out five stacks of gold nuggets, then it will stop working. If we add a chest to the bottom, the initial gold nuggets will drain into the chest and we will no longer be filtering the items. So that won't work. What we want to accomplish is to pull the gold nuggets into the hopper, which we will call the filter hopper, and let them drain into the chest below, but stop the quote unquote draining before the filter hopper empties any of the slots. This is where hopper dynamics come into play. If we place a filter hopper above pointing down and a hopper below, there will be two actions that empty the filter hopper, the push from the hopper above and the pull from the hopper below. Instead, we use a simple trick to deactivate the filter hopper's push. We just point the hopper into a non-valid block, like an air block. So now the only way the filter hopper empties is for the hopper below it to pull. So deactivating the quote unquote draining of the filter hopper means just disabling the bottom hopper, which we achieve by powering the hopper normally with the torch. All we need to do is know when to deactivate the hopper. This is the perfect job for a comparator. Comparators are confusing for a lot of people, but they really aren't that bad. You can check out my short video on them if you want some help on the basics. In this application though, we're using the comparator to measure how full the hopper is. 
The more items in the hopper, the higher the power output from the comparator. Our filter hopper has 5 stackable items in it. The output is 1. When it gets 23 total stackable items in it, the power level goes to 2. So we can just deactivate the hopper when the power level is 1 and activate it when it is 2. We achieved this with a repeater and a redstone torch. When the comparator outputs 1, the torch, which inverts the signal, is on, and when it is 2, the torch is off. This is a bit ugly though, so let's make it a little bit prettier. Now we have our very basic signal strength 2 item sorter. The function is exactly the same. When the comparator signal is 2, the filter drains, and when it is 1, it stops draining the filter hopper, preventing the filter from getting an empty slot. The only change we need to make is using filter items instead of gold nuggets. If we say fill too many gold nuggets in the hopper, it will break the sorter, so instead we use blocking items that shouldn't be in the system. So they're kind of like inert items that essentially turn the hopper into a single slot filter. Since the hopper always drains from left to right, this, combined with the signal strength 2 detector, will prevent any of the slots from becoming empty. This is the basis of item filters. Most run on the same principles. One detail I want to note is how clever the sideways facing hopper at the top is. It disables the hopper push, but allows the pull. Without the sideways facing hopper, the system would not work, because if we tried to disable the filter hopper, it would not pull or pick up items, which would break the whole system. Anyways, this is the base system, but there are many variations. For example, this system will not work if we try to tile it. Tiling means placing several in a row next to each other. The reason it won't work is because if we get 46 or more items, the signal strength will go to 3, and it will open the item filter next to it. We can fix this if we want though by making a signal strength 3 item filter. This is the exact same filter, but we extend the top block by 1, so the repeater only activates with a signal strength of 3. Now this is what we call a one wide tileable design, because it's one block wide and it's tileable, meaning it doesn't interact with the filters on either side of it. The first filter, our signal strength 2 filter, was one wide but not tileable. You can mix and match filters too, so that they don't interact. There's a really nice GitHub repository that has a tool you can use if you are looking to select which filters are tileable with each other. I will link it in the description. Concepts like tileability, compatibility, and hopper speeds are important to understand when designing a storage system, as most systems will use several different components that need to be compatible with each other. But that's going to do it for this video. The next video is a continuation on this topic. It's kind of a two-part video. We will talk about applying item filters into an actual system and double speed sorters. So check it out if you are interested. I'd like to mention that this whole series is a community project, meaning that the concepts, examples, and scripts are all community originated and executed. If you would like to be a part of this process, please join the Discord community. The entire process is open for all Discord members. I'd also like to thank my Patreon members, as always, I really appreciate the support. And I'd like to thank you for watching. Goodbye.